This is part 41 of AngularJS tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss AngularJS route resolve property. Let's understand this with an example. This is the same example that we have been working with in our previous videos in this series. At the moment, we are on the home page. When I click on the students link on the left, notice the students data loads immediately. In our case, we have all the three components of the application running on my local machine. That is, the database server, the application, and the client all are on my local machine. So there is no network latency. That's the reason why the data loads immediately. In case, if these three components are present on different machines, and if there is some network latency, the student's data may take a few seconds to load. Let's introduce some artificial network latency by including thread.sleep statement in the web service method. So let's flip to Visual Studio. At the moment, we are in student service, and this is the web method that is returning list of the student names. So inside this web method, I am going to include system.threading.thread.sleep, and then I'm going to make this thread sleep for 2,000 milliseconds, that is two seconds. Let's build the solution, and let's reload our application. Now look at this. When I click on the student's link on the left, there are two things going to happen. First, the route transitions to the new route immediately. And since the data is going to take at least two seconds to load, you know, on the student's page, we only see the search text box. That's because we have deliberately slowed the web service down. And if you look at what we are doing within our student's controller, we are issuing an HTTP call to our web service method. And what this HTTP call is returning is a promise. Until this promise is resolved, we will not have the data available. And until that point, we don't see the list of students, though we are on the student's view. Let's look at that in action. Look at this. When I click on the student's link, the route transitions to the new route immediately. Initially, we only see the search text box. And then once the promise is resolved, that's when the view is updated with the data asynchronously and we get to see the data. Now, if you don't want to transition to the new route until all the promises are resolved, we can take advantage of the route resolve property. Let's see how to do that now. So the first change that I'm going to do is for the student's route. So here we have the student's route, and I am going to use the resolve property. So this is going to take an object, an object literal. And within this object literal, I'm going to have a property, and I'm going to name it students list. You can this uh, you can give this property any meaningful name you want, and the value for this property is going to be a function, and this function is going to return a promise. So to this function, I'm going to pass the HTTP service. And if you look at what we are doing already within the student's controller, notice we are already issuing an HTTP call to the student service. So I'm going to copy this and paste inside our function that we have created right here. So notice we are issuing the GET request to the web service. And what we are getting back is a promise. And what we want to do is we want to return whatever this web service method returns. And that value will be assigned as the value for this property. So the student's list property here is going to contain the list of student names. And another thing that I'm going to do is we don't have this VM variable anymore here. Whatever student's data we get, we want to store that in the student's list property. So I'm going to include another return statement here. All right. So until the promise returned by this HTTP call is resolved, you know, this is going to prevent the route transition from happening. If the promise is rejected for some reason, then the route transition will be canceled. We will not be navigating to the new route. All right. So that's the first change within the route. We are using the resolve property. And look at the name of the property that we are using here, students list. Now, 
before we transition to the new route, we will have the student's data within this property. That means we can now inject this property directly into the student's controller. So when we navigate to this route, this is the controller that is going to be in charge. So into this controller, we can inject this property. So I'm going to pr copy that property name and inject that into our student's controller. So I'm going to inject the property name there. Now, there is no need to make this HTTP call anymore because the resolved property is all, you know, it's already making a call and it's retrieving the data. We already have the data within this property and we can use that property and initialize the student's variable on the view model. So what I'm going to do is on the view model, initialize the student's property using the student's list that we have. And I'm going to get rid of this call. Since we don't have to issue an HTTP call once again from the controller, we can remove the injection of the HTTP service from there. All right, so with all these changes, let's build our solution. And I'm going to reload the app so at the moment we are on the home page and look at this when i click on the students link here the route you know we don't get to see the students page we will say stay on this home page only when the promise is resolved that's when the route transition happens and at that point we see the students data immediately look at that when i click on the students link we are still on the home page and then as soon as the route transitions, you know, as soon as the promise is resolved, the route transitions to the new route and then the data loads immediately. So that's the benefit of using route resolve property. We won't transition to the new route until all promises are resolved. So here is the change for the route itself. We're using the resolve property here. And this is a change to the respective controller function. In this case, the student's controller function. So in summary, the result property contains one or more promises that must resolve successfully before transitioning to the new route. The property names used in the resolve property can then be injected into the controller. This means the controller does not have to fetch the data by itself. Thank you for listening and have a great day.